I think like most people, I spent a lot of time at home, um, kind of to myself, uh, not really doing much, I guess, surfing through YouTube and things like that. So I think one thing that I did to kind of switch my mind off um, away from everything else was to cook. And so I would, I don't know, it didn't, didn't have to be anything grand or anything spectacular, but I did enjoy cooking. So I would just go buy some groceries from the shops with my uh, one kind of trip for the day and then see what I could make. So I would just get some random ingredients, uh, maybe make a pasta, maybe make like a curry or something. And I think that's kind of helped me kind of switch off from everything else that might have been at the time kind of affecting me. I used to not talk a lot with my cousins, for example, or with a few friends. Uh, but because of the virus, I used to talk to them every week, which was quite surprising. Hello. And you know, we really got to learn a lot about each other. How's it going? We used to talk about life and uh, all kinds of things we wanted to do. We uh, shared so, mu so many things, uh, like, you know, uh, what was in a bucket list and all the other things we had gone through in life which wouldn't have been possible if there was no coronavirus because last year, years before that, I was kind of so busy with myself, busy with exploring things. And I was so busy with that that I didn't really have any time to connect with my family or connect with certain friends. But I think um, coronavirus really kind of affected that in a different way and then I really got to know people. Yeah, it was great talking to you. So long. Yeah. All right, bro. See you later. Bye.
So my parents are divorced. So my mum was living in New South Wales at the time and my dad was up in Brisbane. And the best choice for me was to go and live with my dad because he had like a stable job, he had like a stable living space. So I moved to Noosa and was there for like six months. So it was really hard on my mum and I and our relationship. And she missed my twin brother and I like so much as well. Because he and I were both up in Noosa, we both couldn't see her and that really sucked a lot but um, I guess coronavirus didn't affect me as badly as it did other people in housing or Sydney. My life didn't get as hard or the worst it got was like security out in front of like Coles and I guess restrictions on where you could drive. I mean maybe the biggest thing I'll take away from it is the fact that I'm never gonna get that kind of time with my dad again. I'm never gonna get that time back again with my twin brother and I definitely cherish like the six months I had with my dad and yeah that's probably the biggest thing. I think the one aspect I get that hit me the most were um, the people I've met that left due, due to the, you know, the, the virus. Um, I used to live in Yura and I, um, I think uh, compared to Gomal, there's heaps more exchange students living over there. And so most of my friends around that time were from overseas. So I guess when the restrictions started happening, a lot of them left. But I guess there's this one person who I've known since I've been living in housing. And yeah, we're both like, we were both kind of talking about hyping it up. You know, this is the last semester before she leaves. So we'll make the most out of it. But then uh, when she left unexpectedly, um, I guess I have to like, just accept it for what it was. Because there's no point fighting over it because it's kind of, it's what's better for her. I guess it's one of those at the start of the year where like you kind of appreciate stuff more when it's taken away from you. Um, one of the things I miss the most as well is jamming with people. It doesn't have to be a proper production, doesn't have to be a concert, but just being in a room and just playing, playing your instruments. But I didn't know it was going to affect me as much until they left. But when they did, yeah, it was, it, it was a bit sad, yeah.
bro. You hungry? 